Hi and thank you for joining me. Today we will install Bind9 on an Ubuntu system. If you have a Debian system, the process should basically work the same. We will create a forward lookup zone with a master and a slave Bind9 servers. The domain name we will be using is a delegated domain from a Windows DNS server. So we will create the delegation also. In a previous video, we created a DNS delegation for the domain name windows.techstory.local. In this video, we will create the DNS servers and the delegation for the domain name linux.techstory.local. If you want to check out that video, you can find a card up there to the right or the left. And I will leave the link in the description below. Now let us take a quick look at our current DNS topology and see how far we got. As we can see, we have our main DNS server, which serve the domain techstory.local. And from that, we have two delegation. We have the Windows delegation and the Linux delegation. Now, so far, as I mentioned, we have created the Windows part of this equation. Today, we will create the Linux part of this equation. At a later session, we will create a cache only server, one Windows and one Linux. So I hope you're excited about this as much as I am. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we will do is to update and upgrade our Ubuntu system. Now, this is just a good practice to always update your system before installing any new software. To do this, just type sudo apt-y update and sudo apt-y upgrade and hit enter. Now that this is done, let's install bind9 along with some of bind9 utilities. We're going to type sudo apt, then add the y flag to agree to any question during the installation, dash y, install, bind9, bind9-utils, and bind9-dns-utils, and hit enter. Great. Now we actually have a DNS server, but no forward lookup zone yet. The next thing we will do is to sort out the hostname and the resolve.com file. The hostname will be changed to lns1 and the resolve.conf will be pointed towards the server IP address to use as a DNS server. So let's start by changing the hostname. Two files need to be changed, the hostname and the hosts file. I will begin with the hostname file. Let's type sudo nano slash edc slash hostname to edit the file and type lns1 then save and close by clicking Control x y and enter now the hosts file i will type sudo nano etc hosts and i will change this part and add this vm ip address which is 10 10 10 104 and the name will be lns1 and lns1.linux.techstory.local for me. Of course, you rename it according to your domain name and again save and close. Let's restart this server for the changes to take effect. Then we will take care of the resolve.com file. So I will type sudo reboot hit enter. The next step is changing the resolve.com file. Now this file, however, is handled by the system, so a lot of the times it will revert back to another IP address for the name server. The easiest way to fix this, just to delete that file, recreate it, and type the name server you want, then make it read only, so the system won't be able to change it. First, we will delete the file, sudo rm, etc, slash resolve.conf. Now let's create and edit the file. We will type sudo nano etc slash resolve.conf. Let's type name server and the IP address for this machine, which is 10 10 10 104, and save and close. Now we will limit the access to this file. I will type sudo chatter c h a t t r. Then add the i flag to make the file immutable or read only in other words. Plus i slash etc slash resolve.conf. And if we open the file now, sudo nano etc resolve.conf, we can see that the file cannot be changed. So great. So let's tweak our bind9 options a little. I will use nano text editor, but feel free to use vim if you're more comfortable with that. We will type sudo nano 
slash etc slash bind then named conf dot options I want first to limit the subnets that can use this DNS server to one subnet. You can skip this step if you want to allow any subnet to use your server. We will create an access list named trusted and add the subnet 10 10 10 0 slash 24 because that is what I'm using and a semicolon. You can put your own subnet instead of course. I will also disallow the zone transfer for anyone and add one exception later on. So we will write allow dash transfer and between curly brackets we will write none semicolon and a semicolon after the curly brackets. Now to limit who can do queries let's add allow dash query and put the ACL we created earlier which was trusted. Then I will specify to listen on port 53 and I'm going to use localhost and the IP address for the server which is basically the same thing. And finally let's disable the recursion. I will set recursion to no for security purposes. Usually if you have a DNS server that serves a specific domain name within an organization, recursion will be disabled for that server and a cache server will be used instead for the recursion lookups. If you want maybe to allow recursion for a specific subnet for example, you can set recursion to yes instead and then type allow recursion and add your subnet or ACL here between brackets. Now the option file is done. Let's double check the syntax by using the command sudo named dash check conf and then the file location which is etc bind named dot conf dot option. And if all is well you should get no response back. Now let's move on to the name dot conf dot local file to add our forward lookup zone information. Now if you want to add a reverse lookup zone it is basically the same you just add the zone information below and create the zone file as well. So for the forward lookup zone we will type zone followed by the name of the zone which in my case is linux.textory.local open and close curly brackets followed by a semicolon. Now this server of type master so we will write type master semicolon then the file location I will create this file in a folder called zones which will be located within bind so I will type file and the location of my file which is etc slash bind slash zones then the name of the file which in my case will be db.linux.textory.local between quotation and then a semicolon and finally we will allow zone transfer to the secondary or slave DNS server we can type allow dash transfer between curly brackets the IP address for the secondary DNS server followed by a semicolon and a semicolon after the curly brackets. The next thing we need to do is create the zone folder sudo make dire etc bind and the folder name will be zones and create the zone file itself but instead of creating it from scratch let's copy the template provided by bind9. Let's type sudo cp for copy slash etc slash bind slash db dot local and we're going to copy this to etc bind zones slash db dot linux dot textory dot local or whatever name you choose for your file. Now let's open it and customize it to fit our DNS server sudo nano etc bind slash zones slash and the name of the file which in my case is db.linux.textory.local. The first thing to keep in mind that whenever you edit this file you must increment the serial so that bind will know to update its settings. So let's do this right now and update this to 3. Now let's add our DNS server fully qualified domain name here instead of local and do the same before root. Then let's add our ns name server lns1 and lns2. Also add the IP address for the lns1 server here. 
After that, we will add some A record or IP version 4 records for the servers, along with some test records that will be used later for testing purposes. First, we will type LNS1, which is the name of our primary DNS server, followed by N. The type will be A record and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.104. 10, 10, then we will do the same for LNS2, which has the IP address 10.10.10.105. 10, 10, 10, then we will add a test record for a fictitious web server. We will call it web and it will be an A record and we will give it a bogus IP address of let's say 20 20 20 20. Maybe a fictitious FTP server as well with a bogus IP address of 12 repeated four times. We will actually create those servers at a later session and amend those IP addresses. Great! The zone file is now done, so we will close out of this by clicking Ctrl X, then Y and Enter to save. Now let's check our zone file. Type sudo named dash check zone followed by your domain name. In my case, it's linux.textory.local followed by the zone file location, which in my case is etc. bind zone db.linux.textory.local. And we can see we have an error here. I think I created an NS record instead of an A record. So let's open the file again, or our zone file again. Change the NS record to A record. Close, and let's test again. If all went well, you should get a similar message to this. Let's restart our bind9 server now. We're gonna type sudo systemctl restart bind9 and hit enter. Now let's test this before moving on to the next step. I have my CMD window open on my Windows PC. You can open this by clicking on the Windows key on your keyboard followed by the R key and then type CMD and hit enter. I will type nslookup web.linux.textory.local that's one of the test A records I created earlier if you created a different one then type that instead followed by the DNS server I will use which is 10.10.10.104 10, 10, great we can see we get the correct response with the bogus IP we created which is 20.20.20.20 20, 20, 20, 20. The next step is to configure our slave or secondary DNS server. I have already bind9 installed on this server since we have went through the process earlier. The first thing we will do is to edit our options file. So we're gonna type sudo nano etc bind slash named conf dot options. Here we will add similar configuration to our primary server. I will just paste them in here. ACL here, then the rest of the configuration below. Now let's check the syntax with the command named checkconf and the file location, which is located in slash etc slash bind slash named dot conf dot options. Since we got no errors, then everything is as it should. Now let's open the named dot conf dot local file here. Type sudo nano slash etc slash bind slash name dot conf dot local we will create our zone here we will type zone followed by the domain name in my case that's linux dot textory dot local followed by curly brackets and within the curly brackets we will type the type of the server which is slave the file will just be the name of the file on the master server Next, we will type masters followed by curly brackets and semicolon and the IP address of the master server, which in my case is 10.10.10.104. 10, 10, and finally, we will allow notify also from the same IP address of the master server. Now if you have a reverse lookup zone, you will type the same information below, but with the reverse lookup zone name instead. Now let's check the zone configuration by typing named-checkconf and then the file location. 
And finally, let's restart our server the same way we did the first server. We're going to type sudo systemctl restart bind9 and hit enter. Now let's check if the zone file was transferred to our cache folder. I will type ls slash var slash cache slash bind and then I will pipe grip and I'm just going to type the word Linux because the zone file include that word and hit enter. Fantastic. Everything is working great. Again, we can test this from our Windows PC. I will open CMD, then type nslookup lns1.linux.textory.local. And as we can see, we get the correct results back, which means that everything is working as it should. One last thing we can do is to actually add also dash notify on the master server so that we will receive an update on the slave server every time the zone file gets updated. So I'll just open the name.conf.local file on lns1 and I will add also dash notify and between brackets I will add the IP address for my secondary server or slave server which is 10 10 10 105 and save and I will restart the DNS server. Now the last piece of this puzzle is to add the delegation in the Windows Server DNS. I will open my DNS tool, go to my domain, right click and click on new delegation and click next. I will type Linux and click next. Here I will add both my servers LNS1 and LNS2. I will click on add. I will type in LNS1 dot linux dot tech story dot local which is the fully qualified domain name for my master server responsible for this domain of course this will not be resolved on this windows server because there is no record of that domain so i will type the ip address below which is 10 10 10 104 click ok then repeat the process for lns2 dot linux dot tech story dot local and click finish. This is the moment of truth guys. This last test should tie all the pieces together. Again let's test this from our Windows PC. This time however I will contact my DC01 DNS server which should in turn forward the request to those servers which are LNS1 and LNS2 and we should get a non-authoritative response back. I will type nslookup ftp.linux.textory.local which is one of the domains we created to test with and then the IP address for DC01 which is 10 10 10 101 and hit enter and yes everything is working perfectly together I know this has been a long video but we got a lot done in this session. I've really enjoyed this session. Working with Linux is its own reward in my opinion and finally I really hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next session.